So when you started speaking, what was what was the experience like? Was this a situation where, and I've been in situations where I'm interrupted by occasional shouts. In other words, someone derisively laughing or shouting out a disagreement or whatever. And I've also been in situations where I had to stop speaking because the blow, the incoming was so loud and angry that the, there was just no way to compete with it. So tell us about like, how did this unfold from your perspective? Was this occasional shouts and jeers, or was this kind of a volume of communication, a volume of response from the audience that was impossible to overcome? Uh, David, it was the latter. And I I'm glad you know what you've experienced this. So you know where I'm coming from. Um, as I walked up to the classroom with the Federal Society president, probably 100 yards off, uh, we, we heard the protest. Um, and there was kind of a rally going on in the lobby, which was a pretty small lobby outside the, uh, outside the classroom. I would estimate um, that there were at least 100 people. Uh, there was chanting. There was je je jeering. There were signs. There was... Uh, banging, there was stomping. Um, I was told by someone that um, I should try to record things. And so I tried to do that and I went around recording them um, just sort of as a self-protection thing. Um, I, I was, frankly, I, I was aghast when I saw the kind of protest outside because it was like a kind of a monster truck rally sort of situation. And, and and so I went in the classroom, and then there are posters everywhere. With so me. that that fun, huh? <laughs> it, it, yeah, it, it it was that fun. Um, and and there, so my 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 picture was plastered all over the the law school walls, with sort of that horror movie font. I I, I think of it as kind of a Dracula or a Bride of Frankenstein kind of font. Um, and uh, you know, saying you should be ashamed, uh, Judge Duncan. And then the uh, more disturbing to me was the the faces of the Fed, Federal Society board. They're, the students were plastered up in separate posters with the same uh, Dracula font. Uh, I went in the I went in the classroom, talked to the Federal Society president. There were very few people in the classroom, so I thought, okay, well maybe the idea here is to is to prevent people from coming in and and hearing the speech. Uh, then, uh, as sort of twelve forty five, the time for the speech to start. Uh, rolled around, all the protesters started coming in, and it was noisy, it was raucous. I immediately could tell that this was not going to be a pleasant experience. Um, the, they, the protesters probably outnumbered the Federal Society 100 to 10, um, maybe more, maybe 120 to 10. When I uh, when the president uh, started introducing me, he was uh, hooted down. Uh, every word he said was greeted with mocking derision, shouts, uh, vulgarities. Uh, the, there were signs being displayed uh, that were coarse. <laughs> they were they were vulgar. I didn't understand all the words, but I I got the gist. Um, there was there was a dog uh, painted colorfully painted in the front row. Now I a don't dog? Think painted dog. There was a painted dog. It was a real dog. Um, I don't, and I just wanted to, I, I want to be clear for the record that I don't blame the dog for anything that happened. <laughs> um, so when I started speaking, um, it was, it was not the occasional interruption. It was every word I said was, was mocked. So look, I mean, th maybe there are trained public speakers who could just power through that. Um, but I'm not inclined to do that because what's the point? You know, I mean, nobody's there to, 90% of the people there are not there to hear you. They're there to jeer at you. So what's, what's the point? I mean, I, I don't know, but it was, um, it was a, a, a circus atmosphere, I would say. There has been discussion, certainly from, uh, defenders of yours and sort of free speech advocates um, that potentially this was a setup, right? That the dean had prepared remarks. So clearly there was some expectation that the event was going to get disrupted and, and sort of heckled down. But there has also been some pushback that it was a setup from your side, that you 
did not come with prepared remarks that you never intended to really speak that the point was to make an example of this so that uh, it could embarrass Stanford, you could mock these students, et cetera. I was wondering if you could speak to that criticism. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's ludicrous. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm not a professional provocateur. I have a day job. Um, I'm not that guy, Milo, whatever his name is. Um, I'm, I'm a federal judge. I don't have time to go around the country stirring up trouble. Um, that's just ridiculous. So, um, so yeah, of course I had a prepared speech. Uh, I was going to talk about three prominent Fifth Circuit cases that sort of come in the gray areas of Supreme Court precedent uh, and how the, how the circuit courts sort of either anticipate what the Supreme Court's going to do or react to new doctrinal developments. Uh, I, give, I, I, I haven't given that speech before, but I've given speeches all over the place. So no, the, the idea, there's absolutely and utterly no foundation for the idea that I just went there to shame Stanford. I, I'll be fr very frank with you. I'm not going to use the names, but I went out there as a favor to a very prominent Democrat lawyer who's a friend of mine who just asked me to do a favor to speak to the Federal Society chapter because she had some connections to it. Um, so no, uh, I wasn't, I, I didn't go out there like a, to, to stir up trouble. Um, I've got a, you know, I've got a day job. Uh, as far as whether it was a setup, I str am strongly inclined to think that it is, because I, I, I witnessed the assistant dean um, come into this talk. I didn't know who she was ahead of time. She didn't identify herself to me before the speech. She came in with a portfolio. She opened the portfolio. She had a printed out speech. So I, I don't know to what degree other members of the administration were involved in it. But I know for a fact that one member of the administration was anticipating this. I learned after the fact that uh, she had sent an email, I guess, cl uh, to the entire school, I think, you know, to, to many people, uh, basically saying how distressed she was over the hurt that my presence would, uh, would cause on campus. And, um, you know, so, so this, yeah, this was all planned in advance.